Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures and TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over the implementation for the Fibonacci heap. If you haven't watched the previous videos in the mergeable heap series, then go watch those before you come here because this is just going to highlight the differences between this heap and the lazy binomial heap. And the lazy binomial heap really only highlights the difference between the lazy binomial heap and the binomial heap. And even then, before you watch the binomial heap, understanding what the binary heap first will be beneficial. So go in order and then come back to this video. This is the last heap in our heap series, the Fibonacci heap. So the first thing that you'll notice is that instead of dealing with binomial nodes, we are dealing with Fibonacci nodes. And this is because we are no longer dealing with binomial trees. We have these trees that I guess you can call them Fibonacci trees. Again, we're using the left child right sibling representation because it's more efficient with the heap use case. And what's different with the Fibonacci node and the binomial node is that we now have a mark, which is a Boolean, and this marks the node if a child has been removed. And we need this information so we can keep trees exponential in size. So then our length of the root list is logarithmic. Whenever we delete a child from a parent, we're going to mark the parent. So then the next time we delete the child, we are able to cascade the cut. Next change we have with the Fibonacci node is that we now have a link to the previous sibling. So, so now we have a doubly linked list. On top of storing the right sibling, we also store the left sibling. And this is so we can easily cut elements from their trees. <coughs> and the constructor is self-explanatory. We take a value with the generic type T, set the value, and then initialize the rest of the instance variables. So remember that the Fibonacci heap is really just a lazy binomial heap with, with the addition that decrease key operation is now lazy. So right here we have, if you scroll down right here, the decrease key operation is now lazy. So all of these operations up here are really the same as the lazy binomial heap. There is a bit of change in the code in regards to the Fibonacci nodes because we have to now, uh, when we're manipulating pointers, we now have to take into account this previous sibling. But other than that, all of the operations are the same. So check out the lazy binomial heap video uh, for information on how to implement the rest of the methods. But inspection is the same. Insertion and deletion with binomial with lazy binomial heaps are the same. Peaking is the same. And also taking the union is the same. The only thing that's different with the Fibonacci node is that we're lazily decreasing keys. So this is the decrease key method. It's the single method that's changed in the Fibonacci heap and this decreases the value of the given node to the new value. If the new value is smaller than its parent, it lazily promotes the node to become a root of the forest instead of swimming it up and it returns true if, if successful and false otherwise. So it's going to take in two parameters, a Fibonacci node with the generic type T that we're going to update with and then the new value to update with. And then it returns a boolean true if the update was successful and false otherwise. So the first line of code we have here is that if the value that we're trying to update the node with is actually greater than the current node, that means we are not even decreasing it. So we're going to return false and not let the client do that. Otherwise, we are going to set the node's value to the new value that the client wants to set. And then now we check to see if the node's value is less than the node's parent. If it does, we have to cut the node from the parent and then we perform a cascading cut if necessary. So this call right here doesn't necessarily cascade the cut. It just does the necessary operations after we perform the cut. And you'll see what I mean later. If the node is not less than its parent, then this if statement is not going to execute. And what this means is that we don't need to do any cutting because the heap invariant is not violated. We only want to do our cutting when the child becomes less than its parent. And then I'm actually going to move these two lines into the if statement and you'll see why. These two lines check to see if the node that we have just moved to the root list of the forest, if that node is smaller than the minimum root or the minimum root does not exist, we are going to update the min root pointer to point to our new node because this node now lives in our root list of the forest. So if the node is smaller, if the node is the smallest node, then we're going to set the min root pointer to that. And we're moving it into this if statement because we only want to do it if the node has been cut from its parent and that the node now lives in the main root list. Then after the cut is successful, so we return true. So now these are the two helper methods that the decrease key uses. We're going to have cut and then we're going to have cascading cut. So here down below, this cut method cuts the child from the parent in constant time. So we have a parent 
in child Fibonacci node parameters and it doesn't return anything as the return type. First step is to remove the node from the parent's list of children. So we want to make the parent forget about the child, sadly. If the child is the first child in the linked list of children, then we are going to simply set the child pointer of the parent to the next child. So we're going to set parent.child equal to child.sibling. We then set child.previoussibling to null. Otherwise, the node is somewhere in the middle of the parent's list of children. So we need to simply do a simple linked list removal of the children. So at this point, if the child does not have a previous sibling, something's gone wrong. So we're just going to throw a new error. This should not happen, but this is basically a type guard uh, for TypeScript so that we know that child is not null. We then remove child from the linked list of children by setting the previous sibling of the child to point to the child sibling. So we get the previous siblings and we're going to take that sibling pointer and point it to child.sibling, essentially erasing this child object from the linked list of parents' children. So this step again is just removing the node from the parents' list of children. We then want to decrement the parents' degree because remember our new definition of Fibonacci trees is that a tree has a degree k if it has k children. So since we removed one node from the parent, we're going to decrement the degree by one. We then prepare the child node to become a root. So we're going to set its parent to be null. So erase the parent pointer that it was pointing to previously and then set the mark to false. So you'll notice that if the child at one point had children that's been deleted, we are just resetting that mark when it becomes a new root of the root list. And then finally, we promote the child to become a root of a new tree in our root list of forests. So we do this by setting the head pointer to child. But before that, if there is currently a head pointer, then we're going to link the child with the old head. So we're basically just prepending the child to the root list. So we're going to, if the head pointer exists, we're going to point the child sibling to the head and then set the previous sibling to null. And then we're also going to set the previous sibling of the old head pointer to be the child and then finally do the update. So this is the cut method and this cuts the child from the parent. So we're going to cut it. Then we're going to go into this dot cascading cut. This is cascading cut. It takes a parent parameter, which is just a Fibonacci node of type T, and it doesn't return anything. If the parent does not exist or the parent's parent does not exist, we're going to just return out of this method. And I'll get into why we have to do this later. So here we have this main if statement. This is the main body of the cascading cut method. If the parent's mark is false, that means we've never deleted any children from the parent. Simply just set it to true. The next time we delete a child, we'll know that the parent has already lost the child. Otherwise, the parent.mark is true. So that means this is the second child that was just removed. So we have to cut the current node and cascade. We have to cut this parent from its parent because we have to cascade the cut because it's already lost two children at this point. So we're going to call this dot cut. So it's a recursive definition. We're going to call this dot cut and we're going to cut this object parent from its parent. So parent.parent. .parent. So this is why we are making sure that both of these are not null. And then finally, we also do a cascading cut on the parent.parent. .parent. So the cascading cut is the recursive step that just keeps on recursing its parent. So this is like propagating the information up the tree. And then that is cascading cut. So the three methods that are really new from the lazy binomial heap are just these three. Um, the other operations have changed because we have to deal with the fact that Fibonacci nodes are now doubly linked lists with previous siblings um, but those are the main the main idea of the other operations have not changed the only thing that's really changed is the decrease key we now decrease the key lazily and by lazily i mean that if we are violating the heap invariant we're not going to do any swimming we're going to simply just cut the the child from its parent and then potentially cascade the cut as well up and then remember that this is creating a mess this is the third way of creating a mess in our data structure uh, besides union and in queue so this mess also gets cleaned up with extract and because we're doing this lazily we now get constant time decrease key which is great for graph algorithms like dextras shortest path and prims minimum spanning tree so that was the implementation for fibonacci heap and the main takeaway is that decrease key is now constant as well and which is down from log n due to being lazy and extract min still stays logarith logarithmic with an amortized analysis. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this wraps up the portion of the series where we cover priority queues and mergeable heaps. I personally learned a lot going through all this information and 
I would say that mergeable heaps are quite a complex topic because you have to learn about the idea of being lazy and amortized analysis. So these video series are more of a guide for you to know what to go into. But if you want to fully grok these sort of data structures, make sure to hit the textbooks like CLRS or something. These data structures are very beautiful, um, them being lazy and us still maintaining logarithmic removals with amortized analysis. And it's just, I don't know, it's something much more cooler than just regular sequences like, you know, stacks and queues. But anyways, this wraps up this portion of the series and I'll see you in the next video.